Do you want to make a winter snowman but don't have any snow? Well, I'm going to show you how you can make a 3D snowman in Blender. This tutorial is aimed at beginners with a basic understanding of the interface and will show you how to make a very basic snowman. The next video will show you more intermediate to advanced techniques to add a bit more character. Also, you can show off your skills by entering the Fox Render Farms competition, which I've agreed to be a judge for. The theme is Snowman. See the links in the description for information on how to submit. Each person that enters will get a $50 Render Farm coupon, and you can see the prizes for the winner if you pause the video now. Also, if you like what I do, then do check out my website, links in the description for more great content. So let's get started making a snowman. Okay, so I'm in the basic scene and I'm using 2.93.5. And I'm going to start with the basic cube in the center here, so make sure that's selected. And to make it nice and round, I'm going to press Control 2. What that does is it gives it a subdivision surface modifier. So if I come across to my modifier tab down here, you can see that modifier and there's the two levels. Whatever I press, control two, three, four, that's how many levels it gives it. I'm using two at the moment because I think that gives it a nice round shape with not too many polygons. What's important to remember is that this is a modifier so I can turn it off and I've got my basic cube back and turn it on and it adds that kind of smoothness and extra polygons. So if I come to edit this in edit mode with tab, I've only got the cube to edit. So I'll go back to object mode with tab, that's object mode and edit mode up here and I want to apply this modifier so I can make some adjustments to it. To apply it, we can press Control A or we can go to this drop down here and press Apply. Now when I go to edit mode, I actually have those vertices to play with. I'll go back to object mode first and go to front view with one on my numpad and G then Z to move it above the ground. Not quite above the ground because we're going to edit that in a second and sort of flatten out the bottom a bit as if our giant snowball has squished. But before we do that, let's copy this a couple of times to make our snowman. I'll move up slightly Shift D to duplicate, so Shift D. If I press Z now, that will move it in the Z axis upwards and I can move it to about here. Then I can press S to scale and scale it down. G to grab in the Z axis and move it into position. Let's duplicate another one, so Shift D to duplicate and then Z to move it upwards. Z if you're American, S to scale, move that down and we've got some sort of snowman looking thing there. Let's go to perspective mode and see what that looks like. Not too bad, but I think it needs a bit of editing to make it look a bit better. So back to front view, let's select the bottom one and go into edit mode now. Now we can start editing the shape. If I select the very bottom vertex here, I can move that around by pressing G. But if I turn proportional edit on, which the keyboard shortcut is O, I can press G to grab and I've got that circle of influence now and I can use the wheel to make that bigger or smaller. So if I move this up and move my wheel, you can see that it's influencing more of my shape. So I'll move that up to squish it like this. And I think I'll move the top one down a little bit as well. So I've selected the top one. You can't quite see what I've selected there, but it's one of these in the middle there somewhere. So slightly more squashed. I'll now press tab to go back into object mode and select the next one into edit mode. And this time I'll select one at the side to add a bit more variation. And maybe just one over here and one at the bottom of the side here and one at the front here. So I'm trying to vary the shape a little bit, maybe come around to the back as well and squish that up, squish that across and so on. So it's giving the shape a bit of deformity. That's great. Then the top one, let's G to grab, move that down. And again, into edit mode and start editing the shape very slightly. Okay, so we've got a snowman shape there. I'll just move that down a little bit more so it's overlapping a little bit more like that. Okay, front view again with one on my numpad and select all, G to grab and make sure it's on the floor just there. So we've got the basis of our snowman there. It's a bit blocky, we can easily select all and right click shade smooth. In the next video I'll be doing a more intermediate approach with some sculpting to make this a bit more advanced and give it more character. Let's work on the arms now so shift right click to move my 3D cursor, shift A to add and it doesn't matter what I add here you can add any mesh I'll just add a cube because when I go into edit mode now with tab I can press M to merge all the vertices together at the center. So I've got one vertex just there if I press G to grab you can see it. I've still got proportional edit on so just remember that. But I'm going to right click to cancel any movement, turn proportional edit off, and E to extrude to pull out a new vertex. So somewhere around there, E to extrude, and let's pull out some fingers like this. So always select the vertex, E to extrude. And maybe one of these can have an extra one like that. Okay, it's going off at the side slightly, so we can select all and press S, Y, zero, and that will flatten it out or you can actually do your edit in front view and it will stay flat. G to grab and move that back into the center there. I'll move that up just a touch and that looks about right. 
Okay, so this is just edges at the moment. We need to add a bit of thickness to this. A great modifier for that, if I come across to my modifiers again, is the skin modifier. So it's under generate and skin. Now I'm still in edit mode. It looks a bit strange at the moment. That's because I need to scale down each of my vertices. So if I select all with A, I can press control A and then bring my mouse to the side and you can see it's scaling those down. Somewhere around there should be fine. And then I'll select these ones and then control A to scale and then the end ones control A to scale. And then it adds a bit of a gradient, just like a stick. I'll just scale those end ones down a little bit further. Okay, that's good, but it's a little bit blocky. If we look at it quite blocky like that, we can go to add modifier and add a subdivision surface modifier, or you can press control one or two, and that will automatically add it like we did earlier. Okay, so we've got a arm sticking out the side there. I'll go back to object mode and duplicate this to the other side. So shift D, I can press scale X minus one, and that will flip it along the x-axis to the other side, and I can press G then X to move it over. Now you don't want these exactly the same, so good to go into edit mode and start maybe just moving them around a little bit so there's some variation. And you can always extrude another one so it looks more stick-like, maybe even have another little bit sticking out like that to look a bit more natural. Okay, so that's working nicely. We can select those both and right-click Shade Smooth in the same way we did with the snowballs. And now they haven't got any of their blockiness and they look a bit like twigs. Okay, what about buttons for the eyes? So shift right click to move into position, shift A to add, and this time we'll add a cylinder. Now our cylinder doesn't need to be this complex. We can come down to our cylinder properties here and change this down if we want to. It doesn't matter a great deal, but I'm going to put it down to about 16. I just prefer to optimize in case people want to use this for games or anything like that. So let's scale that down now. Notice when I press scale, it removes my options to edit the cylinder and you can't get them back. You have to actually add a new cylinder and change it from there. I'm going to scale in the Z to bring it down to about here. So it's sort of button sized and scale it down again and rotate in the X axis 90 degrees. So R X 90 scale in the Y and that's great, but it's not really attaching to our snowman. We can come around here and rotate and rotate it again this way, but it's a bit awkward doing it like that. Instead, we can turn snapping on and turn snap to faces just here. And if you have a line rotation to target and project individual elements on, now if we press G to grab, we can kind of snap it and stick onto our face like that. It may still need a tiny bit of adjustment, but it generally does a pretty good job. Okay, I'm gonna edit the shape slightly if you want to make it more buttonified. So tab into edit mode, select this end face here, I to inset, E to extrude to pull it backwards, Actually, I'll undo that and turn snapping off because it was snapping to my object. E to extrude to pull it backwards. I to inset again. And G to grab. Z twice to go in the local Z axis. So if I do that again, G, Z, Z, that goes in the local X axis. So it disregards any rotation that you've made to your object. And it's a bit more button shaped now. Let's come back into object mode. Press control one to get a subdivision surface level of one. And it looks a bit more buttonified now. You can make some adjustments to this, but I think that looks relatively okay for what we need. And what I'm going to do is press Alt D to create a duplicate of this, but it's an instance. So it's exactly the same as the original. So if I go into edit mode and let's say change this, it will change it for the original. So if I want to make any adjustments to my buttons, I only have to do it on one and it will update on all of them. I'll turn snapping back on and press G to grab. So that snaps and maybe change the size of it. So we've got some odd buttons. So Alt D, Move that down to the bottom, scale it down, Alt D, and just keep pressing Alt D. Maybe change the size, so scale them up. Anything you do in object mode won't affect the original, so they can have different scales, but anything you do in edit mode will affect all of them. Okay, so it's starting to look fun. Let's grab one of these, Alt D, and move it down to here. And Alt D again to there. Scale that down. And it's looking okay. Lastly, a carrot, so shift right click. Shift A to add. Now you'd think a cone would be a good idea, but generally it's much easier to model with a cylinder. So we'll choose a cylinder again. I've got 16 sides, I think that's fine. R, X, 90 to rotate in the X axis 90 degrees. Let's scale it right down to somewhere around there, maybe a little bit thicker. And then into edit mode, select this end face. So I'm in face mode up here. E to extrude. Oh, let's undo that and turn snapping off. E to extrude, S to scale, and just move it very slightly and then come around to a different position, E to extrude, S to scale, and move it really slightly, E to extrude, S to scale, and move it really slightly, 
scale that one down a bit more E to extrude and S to scale and E to extrude and scale it right down but not to nothing because carrots don't have an end that's a point okay so we've got our carrot there if I right click on that and shade smooth we've got a smooth carrot I think it needs a little bit more adjustment if I go to edge mode with two so edge mode up here I can alt left click and select an edge loop and start adjusting these a little bit more and if you want to make it a bit smoother so I'm selecting this edge loop here with alt left click I can press ctrl B to bevel it and that will create a bevel you can use your wheel to create more cuts in there if you want it even smoother so somewhere around there looks like a decent carrot I think so there's our basic snowman I'll go across to the shading tab and add some basic colors in the next session I'll talk more about adding some complexity to this and some more detailed textures but for now let's just add some basic ones so you can have a finished snowman for this session the snowballs themselves have a good material there which is nice and white but something like the sticks we need a new material that's brown so new material that's added a principled BSDF and I'll call this wood and we can change the color of our items just here with the base color bring it down to the brown area and bring the tone down so it's a bit darker I'll click away so we can see that it's not too bad maybe a little bit less saturated so into the middle of the circle and maybe a little bit darker somewhere around there anyway now to copy the material from one to another we select the one we want to copy to first and whatever we want to copy from last so shift select the one we want to copy from that makes it the active object highlights it yellow like this and we can press Control L for link and link materials and we've now linked that across the other side for the buttons I'll select one of those add new material and add a sort of dark buttony color around about there notice that all of them have the same because they're all linked that makes it nice and easy now lastly the carrot select that new material I call it carrot and let's make that orange so somewhere around here maybe a tiny bit darker I'll press shift right click somewhere else so we can actually see the carrot probably a little bit more orangey and somewhere around there lastly you might want a floor in there so shift A to add mesh and then plane that's obviously adding it on my 3d cursor but I can press alt G to remove any grabbing so alt G and then scale that up and we've got a nice simple floor so a really basic snowman there in the next sessions we'll be adding some more detailed material and more detailed objects like a scarf and a hat do remember the Renderman competition and do check out my website for more great content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.